Hello, this is Zachary Lewis again with the second installment of uh, Making Games with Flashpunk, brought to you by The Game Studio. Uh, today I'm going to talk about embedding graphics into your Flash, uh, cre uh, creating a class that subclasses the base entity so you can start to customize it, allowing you to use the keyboard to move your player, creating an enemy, and handling collision between the player and the enemy. So we've got a big lesson planned out. Um, the first thing that I'd like to show you is if you ever get stuck or if you ever need help, Flashpunk has one of the best communities that I've ever been a part of. So just go to the forum, flashpunk.net slash forums. Don't hesitate to ask any, any question, no matter how big or small. There are tons of people there who are willing to help. So, all right, to begin, uh, we still have our world from, from last time. You can see that when we run it, then we're gonna, you know, have our little dealie, our output saying stuff happened, whatever. Um, but this time we're going to add our own graphics as opposed to just drawing squares on to the screen. Um, so the way that you can embed graphics in Flashpunk is really, really simple, especially when using Flash D, D, uh, Flash Develop. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new class and we'll call it Player. And this is going to extend our entity class. So in order to embed an asset, all we have to do is find our, our assets. I've already saved them in assets, graphics, and then enemy and player. In Flash Develop, you just right click, insert into document. It'll automatically add all the embed code that you need. So now, in order to use this, we have to make this a type. So we'll say private uh, constant, because we aren't going to be changing it. And we'll name this uh, player graphic. And it's a type class. Don't ask me why, that's just how Flash deals with it. So we're just going to let it go. All right, so since player extends our base entity class, it's got a lot of properties available. The first thing, though, is the image property. So we're going to create a public variable to handle the image so we can modify it from outside of the player. So public variable uh, image. And we'll create that as an image. Now in the constructor we're actually going to create this image. So image equals new image. And then it asks for the source. So that's going to be our player graphic. It's really simple stuff. We've already added the player graphic. And then if you only wanted to clip part of that out, you could specify a clip rectangle here, but we don't need to worry about that. So we'll just go with player graphic. So now all we have to do is assign that. We say that our graphic equals that image. And now the embedded image that we have here is going to be on our player. So to see that in the game world, and begin, we're just going to add new player. Now, you don't have to add these. If it's an empty constructor, you can just leave it blank. So now you can see that when we run it, look at that, we've got our character that we've imported in. So, like I said, extremely simple stuff. So let's get into moving the player. So again, like you saw last time, uh, everything has an update property. Um, so we're gonna override entity's default update and so this will allow us to do specific movements with this entity so we're going to import our input we're also going to import keys and the key class is going to allow us quick access to a lot of commonly used keys so let's do some simple checking right if input dot pressed uh, key dot left. Now let's do right first. Now of course this is really simple just showing you the basic technique. So if we're pressing our right key then we want to move our character right. So our character's x is going to be equal to some move speed, we'll say 100. We're going to multiply that by fp.elapsed since this is a variable time step. And don't forget to import FP. It's one of the most important classes in Flashpoint. 
So now, whenever we're holding down right, it's going to move 100 times the time step. So basically, this is saying 100 pixels per second. So we can see that if we run it, and then I can just push down on the right arrow key, and you can see how she's moving. So now, you'll actually want to use input dot input dot check because press only checks if the key is pressed that frame so if we use check then it'll constantly check every update and allow us to move like that pretty simple so we can go ahead and add something like this for each of our, our four movements so up down left right so left and when you're rapidly making games like this don't hesitate to copy and paste code and just change little tweaks because that's you know, knowing what you can and can't copy and paste, you know, can, can really make a difference in the time that it takes you to create a game. So you can see for left, I just want to subtract. For up, I want to subtract as well since that's how the coordinate axis works. Now I'll give it a little run. And you can see now I can move my, my player around the screen using the arrow keys. So that's pretty neat. Uh, now, in order to handle collision, we're going to need to set a hitbox for our character. So first, what we want to do is see our hitbox. So in main, we'll just go ahead and say fp.console.enable. So now you can see there's a lot of console stuff. And so when we hit tilde, it's going to show us our hitbox, which is showing, you know, we got nothing there. So let's go ahead and create the hitbox for our player. So, set hitbox, and you can check to see how, uh, what dimensions your image is. 101, I will say it's 100 by 100. And now you specify the origin X and Y location. X will be zero, Y will be, I don't know, 70. Uh, now this is based on the position on the entity where the hitbox is drawn and as you can see when we run it now and hit tilt we should see that our hitbox is way off um, so we definitely got one of our properties wrong so this should be negative 70 try that again let's move right into the center click the wrench now you can see that that hitbox is a lot better than before So still a little bit too far so let's bring it up a little bit let's try negative 40 a lot of game pro programming is trial and error and this is no exception alright so that that looks like a pretty good hitbox we could probably sh shrink it in some um, so maybe not 100 maybe it's only 80 maybe negative 20 alright so that's that's looking good enough good enough for this game so now that we have a hitbox, let's assign a type. Now the type is how Flashpunk sees groups of of entities, so you want to apply a similar type to similar entities. So this type will be player. All right, so now that we have our player, let's go ahead and create an enemy. And again, it's going to extend from entity. and we'll do the same thing we did. Remember, right click, insert into document, and now you have to give it the properties. Public constant. Enemy graphic. Class. So now, we'll make a new image. Actually, for this enemy, we can just pass it right in, into the graphic. Equals new image, and then specify enemy graphic. All right, and then we'll just give it a random x. So we're just going to make a random location between these screen bounds. So now you can see when we add an enemy. We can add a couple of them like that, just to test. You'll see, alright, now we've got a couple little enemies around the board. 
So right now you can see nothing happens, and you can just walk right through them. Whatever. So we need to do a couple things first. Let's give a type to the enemy. We'll just say type equals enemy. All right. Additionally, we want to set the hitbox for the enemy. And the enemy is a little bit wider. Hmm. Again, trial and error. We can just try this out real quick. It's pretty close. It looks like we need to just move that hitbox down some. And it could be a little taller. There you go. Now that's a good looking hitbox if I've ever seen one right there. So now you can see that our player and our enemies are well defined. So now let's handle our collision since we have types for them and our player. Again in our update after we move we'll do a simple collision check. So we'll just say if collide we want to collide against enemies at our location x and y then we'll go ahead and tint our character red like they've been hit. If they didn't collide, then we'll just leave our character white. So now you see we can move. And if we encounter an enemy, then we'll turn red. So, again, quite simple. I'm, again, checking against all of the different kinds of, of, of enemies that I've got out on, on the screen. And it's reacting with the hitbox. Turn the console back off. We can just comment that line out. I like to have it there, so I have the option of turning it on and off. So now you can see that we've got our own little game. Uh, again, right now, we're just learning basics. It's, it's not very fun yet, but you can see that in a mere 12 minutes we've added assets we've put them onto the screen we've allowed the player to move around using the keys we've created enemies that are randomly generated and uh, we've also checked collision between our player and our enemy so from here we could go on to allowing the enemy to hurt the player or perhaps the player you know will be bumped back if they encounter an enemy. But the fact is that this simple framework has been generated really quickly and really easily with Flashpunk. So if you tune in next week, or next time rather, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, a character, a player enemy relationship, um, show a little bit more optimized way to generate and handle en enemies, and we'll also show spawning um, items like bullets or enemies during runtime so your player can shoot or so enemies can constantly come on screen and bother the player. So I hope you tune in next time. Thanks.